There we go. We are recording today. So I'm going to start with our land acknowledgement. Georgian acknowledges that all campuses are situated on the traditional land of the Ashnabeg people. The Ashnabe include the Odawa, the Ojibwe, and the Potawatomi nations, collectively known as the Three Fires Confederacy. Georgian College is dedicated to honoring Indigenous history and culture and committing forward in the spirit of reconciliation and respect with the First Nations, Metis, and Inuit people. Shimigwich. So if you've been with us earlier today, um, throughout the week, we've had a lot of conversations about the land acknowledgement. This idea that the land acknowledgement is not necessarily just about the land, it's also about us and how we are connected to the land. And that uh, the recognition that we have a past through our ancestors, we have a future and we have a present. And the idea is that the past and the present are today and were yesterday, but they don't necessarily have to define our future. But we also recognize that part of our past is inside of us and we carry it with us. We're going to talk a little bit about that today. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Jess. Jess is an incredible woman. Uh, she is a world-class speaker. She has uh, been overseas to do her MBA. She is a systems changer. She's a change maker. And she ha has led many, many pathways for many individuals and many organizations and looking deeper into what does real change mean, not only with the individual, but also the systems that they work in. And so without further ado, I'm going to uh, pass this over to Jess and Jess can fill in any of the blanks she would like and introduce us to our session today. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Nicole. And huge thanks to all of you coming and spending this time here. I'm really honored to take you on this journey today. And this, this workshop is not what you might have typically assumed from a goal setting workshop. What I'm going to offer you today is really inviting you into a journey. And we're not just going to be listening. I'm going to invite you to do exercises with me throughout. So make sure you've got paper and a pen as we go through this. If you don't have that, grab that now. I'm gonna be talking in little bits, but mostly guiding you through a journey where you're going to explore what is it about yourself that you wanna shed? Who is it that you wanna step into? And what's the vision that you're really excited to bring forth in the world? And one of the places where I wanna start is by inviting you to think about yourself as an instrument. And I'd like to think of all change makers and all of us as from this mindset of self as instrument. And in this way, if you think about an orchestra and all of these different instruments, there is this overwhelming music that's blaring. And that's the music of our, of, a, of, of disconnection where there is this disconnection from the earth, disconnection from how we rely on each other, disconnection from ourselves and our own inner voice. And what I wanna invite you in today is to think about if we view our own selves as change makers and as, our, as instruments, it is one thing to attune to what you're listening to. And I think by being here, all of you are starting to do that. And it's another thing to think about what is it inside of you? What is the music inside of you that you wanna bring forth? And how can you harmonize with the subtle shifts of a different, different music that's, that's emerging? One of a future where there's more connection, where we've made choices to lead from love versus fear. And in the work that we're going to do today, I'm going to invite you to see that to, to really create and tune into whatever harmony and melody you want to contribute and attune to, it takes intention. And it takes a pause. And it takes that moment of really reconnecting with ourselves to make those choices, not just blaring with whatever music is blaring and going along with what this dominant culture and system is, but to actually stop and ask ourselves, how can we reconnect 
with what we want to tune into. So a few words about how you can make the most of today. One is I invite you to be really honest. So with yourself, to not let any of those shoulds about what you should want, what you should do, who you should be, to just let those go. As I take you through these exercises, I want you to shed your shoulds and as much as you can not censor yourself and just write whatever comes up and trust it. The second thing I wanna invite you to do is really invite in possibility. And by that, I mean, I want you to imagine that many things are possible for you and for your life and be playful about that. Go really deep, but also allow that lightness in and have fun with this. And the third thing I wanna invite you to do is to in whatever way you can move from your head to your heart. And in that, I mean that, especially when we are doing this work about where we wanna go in the world and the vision we have for our lives and ourselves, our head often jumps in and it's like, you can't do this, you can't be that. If you did this, this person would be furious. You're never gonna make enough money doing that. That's not possible. And that's your head, that's your fear coming in. And today I want to invite you whenever you can to sink into your heart and this place that knows that these possibilities are out there for you. They're out there for us. They're out there for our collective humanity. And that when we change how we look at things, the things we look at change. And so to really ground us into that, I want to invite you into uh, meditation. Now, some of you may not have done a meditation before, and that's totally okay. Uh, what I want to invite you into is to just take this moment to ground into the gift you're giving yourself by being here and being here fully. And so that you can be present and you can be connected to your heart in this session. So if you feel comfortable, I invite you to close down your eyes or you can just hold a soft gaze. And I'll invite you to take a deep breath. In through your nose and out through your mouth. And just taking that opportunity to really slow down. you can let your shoulders come down from your ears. You can let yourself relax just 5% more to really sink into the chair that's holding you. And to ground us in place, I want you to really feel your feet on the ground or whatever part of you is touching the ground and imagine roots starting to grow from that place. And imagine them going through the floorboards of your house and into the soil. And imagine all the creepy crawly insects and bacteria and life that we rarely see, but always co-creating with us that are all beneath you. And I invite you to breathe into those roots and imagine how they're connected to my roots, how they're connected to the 44 other people who are here with us, and how your roots are connected to every living thing. Now, I invite you to imagine what is above you, beyond your roof, reaching up into the sky, through the clouds, through the stars, and into that immensity of the universe. And just take a moment to breathe into that speck of dust that is each one of us. And then to ground us in time, I want you to imagine looking behind you 
and seeing the 2,000 generations who've come before you. Remembering, honoring their journeys, their struggles, their joy. And imagine looking forward and all the generations to come after you. And in many ways, the way that they're calling us to do this work. And then I invite you to hold in your mind your very first inhale and cry as you entered this world. And the very last exhale you will release when you leave. And ground into this moment and this gift of time that you've given yourself by showing up here, that you can give yourself by showing up here fully Connect with your intention for today and strengthen your courage to make the most of your gifts of your life and our collective humanity. May our time together today be in service of a more beautiful and more loving world. And with that, I invite you to come on back you can open your eyes when you're ready. And I hope that's helped you move from your head to your heart. Let me connect to the work that we're doing here together today. So to start us off, I want us to get into a space where we are welcoming in that sense of possibility. So I'm gonna do something called a lightning round and what I'm going to do is put up a slide and I'll also read it out loud. And how this works is we're trying to tap into what it is that is your first thought. So without censoring too much, what is on the very surface? And on each slide, I'm going to present a beginning of a sentence, a couple of words, and invite you to write down whatever comes up for you that you would fill in the rest of that sentence. Don't think too much. You're only gonna have a couple of seconds for each one. The goal here is to just be really accepting of whatever shows up and use it as a way to get to know yourself, check in with your mindset and see where you're at. And I'll be going through each one. You don't need to write down the sentence fragment that I present to you. You just need to write down whatever it is that comes up for you. And you'll look back at all of those words at the end. And I'll be sharing this deck with you if you wanna come back to it. So I'm gonna move through those quickly, but use it just as a prompt to, to warm up and get yourself into this sense of possibility. So I'm gonna share my screen now. All right, so the first one, I live for. So just write down whatever comes to mind, I live for. The next one, I feel most alive when. If I could wave a magic wand and change one thing about my life, I would. Uh, 
I want to feel more. I want to release my attachment to. This time next year, I want to. I want to create. If I had two extra hours a day, I would. What I want most is. I want my life to be guided by. My wildest dream is to Okay, so hopefully that got you started. I want you to take a moment now to just look at all the words that you wrote down. And I want you to add anything else that comes up for you around what will be part of the most beautiful vision you have for your life. And that could be experiences you want to have, relationships you want to have, things you want to do, be, create, anything else that just comes up while you're in this space of possibility. And just add that in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to invite us to take this, all this fun, playful, dreaming we've been doing. And I want to offer you a, a tool called defining your growing edge. And this, this tool that I'm going to introduce you to that we're going to walk through next, it's part of how you can take this vision that you've created and make it a reality where we can think about how are you showing up now? How do you want to show up in that next version of you? And what are the actions you can take to help you close that gap? And this, this tool and this idea, they're based on the concept that thoughts are powerful. Our thoughts are powerful. And yes, there are systems of oppression that make it harder for some of these visions to come to life for many of us. And our thoughts are incredibly powerful. 
And what I want to offer to you as we go through this is to stay in that space of possibility, stay in that space of being honest with yourself and keep coming back to moving from your head to your heart as we go through it. Now I'm going to share my screen again. And you're going to need a new piece of paper. And what I'm going to invite you to do is take that new piece of paper and divide it into three columns, like you'll see that I did in this on this slide. And as you'll see, I, this is all hand drawn. I like to hand draw as many of my slides as I can. I feel like it just I'm an analog person want to, as if we were in person in a workshop and I could draw this on a whiteboard for you. So on your paper where you've made these three columns, I'm going to walk you through what to put in each one. And then at the end, I'm going to give you a bit more time to come back and really dive in and flesh that out a little bit more. So the first thing I want you to do on this the first column on the left hand side, you see it says you today. How am I showing up in the world today? And what do I want to shed? So in this left hand column, what you're going to write down is a really honest inventory of how you're showing up in an area of your life that doesn't feel aligned with that beautiful vision that you just brainstormed. So I encourage you to choose one aspect of your life. And this could be how you're showing up at work or at school or with, with your family or with a particular relationship or with your friends. Choose one area of your life that doesn't feel like it's moving you towards that vision. It's not in alignment. There's some constriction there and some mm, doesn't quite feel like it's where you want it. And then to take a really honest look, how are you showing up? And so as an example, when I first used this tool and started working with it, I was in a job that wasn't where I didn't feel alive in it. And when I, although on the outside, I don't think anyone would have noticed, I was really good at showing up in all the ways that I was supposed to was really good at all the things I should be doing. When I took that honest inventory, I realized I was feeling disconnected. I was showing up indecisive, scattered, unmotivated, was overwhelmed, burnt out, rushed, just always focusing on the list of things I had to do. So in that vein, I invite you to take a moment and do that honest inventory for yourself. How are you showing up in this area of your life that doesn't feel like it's in alignment with that vision? So just jot down whatever comes to mind and be open and trusting of whatever shows up. Okay, so now I'm going to invite you to come to the column on the furthest right hand side. So this is where my slide says the next best version of me. 
And the question for this one is, how am I showing up in the world inside this next version of me? Who am I stepping into? So in this one, I want you to think about all of those words that you wrote down when we were doing the lightning round. I want you to think about what type of person would be able to live that vision? What kind of beliefs would that person need to have about themselves or about the world? Who is it that, what are the values that that person is living fully? And as you're filling this out, one thing I wanna offer is that if we were doing the lightning round exercise, or as you were thinking about your vision, you didn't have any specifics because you're just not really sure what your vision is, that that's okay. And that's part of the journey. That's part of whatever process and cycle that you might be in of just letting that germinate. But when you are looking here of what is that next best version of me, maybe it's this person has clarity. This person is decisive. It doesn't have to be details of this person has this job and they are in this kind of relationship. It doesn't have to be specifics. It can just be, how are they showing up? What do they believe about the world? So as an example for me, when I was first filling this out, as I mentioned, I was doing work that I didn't that didn't make me feel alive, but I didn't know what I wanted to do instead. And part of that unmotivation was just, I was so indecisive, so reactive. So for me in that next best version of me, I imagined someone who was so connected to their, their whispers, as I would call them, their inner voice of what they should do with their life, that I was clear, I was confident, that I was on fire with a sense of motivation and purpose, that I felt so alive in my work, that I felt nourished by it, that I felt like I could use my gifts, that I was being well used by life, that I was showing up in my full self every day. And I just put all of that in there. And so it's not about, has to, doesn't have to be about the details. So I encourage you to do that and jot down anything that comes to mind. And to get creative, it doesn't all have to make sense yet. It's again, just like the lightning round exercise, I invite you to just write down whatever comes up. Try not to censor yourself. And put how you want to show up in the world inside this next version of you, who's fully able to realize this beautiful vision for your life. And you'll see at the top that I've also written name it with a line. And Nicole will know this from working with me before, but I really believe that there's so much power when we can personify these different parts of ourselves, whether they are future parts of ourselves that we want to call in. So this name it part is actually one of the most important aspects of this whole exercise. So what do I mean about this name it part? This is as you think about this next best version of you, who they are, how they show up, how they feel. I want you to think of what is a name you could give that part of you. So this could be something like you're drawing on a character from a movie or a show that has elements of how you want to show up. 
It could also be calling on, on the elements or something in nature. I have a, a river Jess that I like to call on. It can also be, I've also used Jess 4.0. And that can be a way of having something that is essentially your shortcut. That when you think of that name, immediately you can call up all of the different things you've written down here. And as you keep working with this tool after this workshop, I encourage you to keep fleshing out that next best version of you. And that when you, as you do that, as you've got this idea of who this person is, having this name allows you to call them in. And the powerful part is that you can call them in Let's say you're in a, in a decision. Should I take this course or this one? What would River Jess do? You're about to go into a difficult conversation. How would River Jess show up in this conversation? But you're about to do something that scares you. Like when I launch my business. And in my head, I was like, mm, Jess 4.0, that person who is so alive in the work that she does, she would just do it. And you can call on that part of you. So if you don't have a name yet, you can come back to it, but that I encourage you to not let that part slide because it's one of the most powerful parts of this whole process. So now coming to the middle column here, and you'll see my, my pastels here at the top. And this is where you're going to really think about what is, how can you close that gap between how you, how you show up today to that next best version of you? And what I wanna offer is that the quickest way to close that gap is to choose to show up today as this next version of you, despite current circumstances. So that is really where the power lies in this tool. And that's part of when I was saying you can call on how I've called on Jess 4.0. It's like I put on this like cloak of who, of this new identity. And we often think that, well, I'll be able to step into that version of me when I get this particular job or when I make this amount of money or when I can do these types of things. But what I wanna to offer to you is that you can lead with your mindset. You can lead with your identity and then have these actions that you take, prove it to yourself. And that by leading with that, we can actually close that gap so much faster and so much more intentionally to allow us to show up as that next best version of ourselves in more and more circumstances, even if we don't yet have that job, even if we don't yet have that relationship. And what I invite you to do in this column is to write down three actions that you could take to start closing that gap. Now, they can be big, sweeping, huge actions, but what I found and what a lot of the research bears out is we're often far more likely to do any of these actions if they are small, really small and very doable, things that we know we can do. So as you think about what actions you could take today to start showing up in that next best version of you and despite your current circumstances, I encourage you to choose something, choose things that are small but really meaningful and that act as votes that you're casting towards that new identity. And essentially we're trying to build a new neural pathway in your brain. And every time you, you choose something, you're either continuing to build the neural pathway of how you have habitually shown up or you're starting to build a new one. So the actions that I took when I filled this out the first time one, I immediately knew about a type of project that I that I felt this, this yearning would be interesting for me to do, 
but wasn't on my plate. So I knew right away that I needed to say, find a way to say yes to that and to ask for it and claim it. The second thing, I needed to stay really curious because I didn't know what would make me feel alive. So I needed to say yes a lot more. So I committed to every day saying yes to something that made me feel alive. And the third thing that I needed to do was to practice stepping into this next best version of me. So when I talk about it as almost a cloak that you're putting on, I created a daily practice of intentionally stepping into, at this time I was working with Jess 4.0, and really trying to put that mindset on, even though I didn't feel at all like her. So in the mornings, I would get up and I created a practice of almost like a type of mental rehearsal. And some of you have probably heard of mental rehearsal before used with athletes or musicians. You know, the Olympic athletes have their coaches their coaches tell these athletes to go through their, their swim, you know, Michael Phelps going through the swim of his race in his head hundreds of times. And that they've actually found in the research they've done with athletes and with musicians that even when they are not ever in the pool, they're just thinking about it, that that is so powerful that it can have almost a similar effect to actually doing it. So one of the actions that I took and that I encourage you to think about also is that I started doing a mental rehearsal of me in Jess 4.0. So I did this with a journal where in the morning I'd write down, I'd start with, I am Jess 4.0. I am brave with my life. I feel alive in my work feel deeply connected, a sense of meaning and purpose. And I would just go on and on and on writing about how I was showing up as Jess 4.0. Like I was putting on this cloak, like I was doing this mental rehearsal, especially if I knew I was going to have a difficult conversation or a difficult situation I needed to go through that day where I would want to call on her. So that practice was something that I committed to as a step that I knew would help me close the gap, help me step into this growing edge. So I'll give you a minute to think about that, those actions. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put on a bit of music. And what I encourage you to do is come back to each of the three columns that I've just described and see if you can flesh them out a bit more. See if you can add more looking honestly at how you're showing up today put in some more around how is it that you want to show up, look back at the visioning that we just did in that lightning round. Is there anything there that you can add? And don't forget to name it. And then come up with any actions that, that, that come up for you. And if you've got more than three, you can always whittle them down. Don't recommend committing to more than that, but this can be still a brainstorming process. Are there any questions uh, folks have any questions before we, before I put that on, you can drop them in the chat and Nicole, I don't know if there are any, we're good. Okay, so I'm going to put on that music.
right. I hope that gave you some, some ideas to get started on that. And I invite you to keep, keep letting this simmer as you go. And, and part of letting that simmer is what I'm going to invite you to do now. We're going to go into breakout groups. And a lot of the work that I do, I am I'm a coach, so I work one-on-one -on -one with people, but my favorite work is actually bringing groups together. Because what I've seen, and I'm sure some of you have experienced this before, there is incredible power in hearing someone else's reflections, someone else's story, someone else's journey, and what that helps you to understand more deeply about your own. And so what I'm gonna invite you to do in those breakout groups, you don't have to share what you put in your three columns. That is for you and only for you. If you feel called to do so, you can, but I would never want anyone to feel like they have to share it because that's when our shoulds start coming in. And often those vision pieces, they're like tender blades of grass. And at some point you might be ready to tell people, or maybe someone you really trust in your life, about this next breast version of you that you're trying to step into, but also recognize the tenderness that, that, that you wanna hold with that. But what I am gonna invite you to do in your breakout groups is to share what did you notice about the power of this pause, this setting intention of just taking a moment to ask yourself who is the next best version of me that I want to step into and inviting each person in your breakout group to just share what they noticed. How might you use this tool? What does it mean for you? What, what do you like about it? What do you not, what's challenging about it? And in that way, being able to hear how other people are using this to help you process what this might mean for you in your own journey. So Nicole's going to put you into groups of four to five, and we will give you about 10 minutes to have that discussion and invite you to, to share whatever you, whatever you feel called to and just use that opportunity to deepen your own insight as you hear from, from others. Any questions before we go into those breakout groups? Awesome. Okay. Thank you, Nicole. I'm not going to join the breakout room. I've got messages coming up at me, but okay. <laughs> I just want to say hi and thank you. Yeah, no, no worries. Are you okay? I know we've got a little thing. I know we have a few things blowing up. <laughs> yeah, and sorry, my husband's doing home renovations today. Um, no, I think we're okay. I'm just trying to support Vicky with all these multiple registrations and getting students into... Um, do you want to pause recording, actually? <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. All right, I think that's that's almost everybody back. So welcome back. I hope you had a good conversation and chance to connect and really feel into how you might use this tool in your life and what this journey of, of being intentional can look like. And one of the things that I want to offer as you think about this work and what it means to take this pause and be intentional is that we are often, we think about learning in this linear, in this linear way. So we think about learning from our experience. It's 
like we go from grade one to grade two to grade three and we keep going into high school and then we might go to college and then and learning becomes this linear journey and what i want to offer to you is that what you do when you are being intentional like this is you can look at learning as more of a spiral and in some ways learning if we don't ever take these moments to pause to bring in intention to integrate we are essentially going around in this very tight spiral we're probably in many ways learning the same things again and again but in a different form in a different relationship in a different decision but we're still going around but when we take these pauses when we take a moment to, with intention, how might I wanna change my path? We are expanding out that spiral. So yes, you're still going around, but you're going out and it's each circle is wider from the, from the one before because you're able to integrate and you're able to expand. And so much of this human journey and this human experience is about this expansion. And in some ways, the remembrance of coming back home to who we really are and the continuation of going through that journey in a way that allows us to expand more into that. So what I'm going to invite us to do now, now that you've had a chance to play with this a little bit, is I'm going to invite us to do a type of this mental rehearsal together and really try this on and see what, what wisdom comes up for you. And what I invite you to do in, in that process is to, again, come back to what I encourage you to do at the beginning. Keep coming back to how can I be really honest and shed my shoulds and tap into what it is that I most want. And then how can I bring in a sense of possibility here and then how can I move from my head to my heart and do that as we go into this mental rehearsal? So what I'm going to invite you to do is if you feel comfortable, you can close down your eyes or you can just hold a soft gaze. And I want you to take a moment to just slow down your breath. And really reconnect back to yourself. And I want you to imagine that you're going to meet this next best version of you. That you're heading out to meet them somewhere. And you can imagine where that somewhere is. And as you're coming up to the table where this next version of you is sitting. Imagine what are they wearing? What do they look like? How do they receive you as you come up to the table? And then as you sit across from them, what, what energy do you pick up from them? just by being in their presence. And then you start to share all of the things that you're trying to shed, all of the things you're trying to let go of and the challenges with that. And you share that with this next best version of you, whoever you've named them. And they listen, they acknowledge you and then they start to share all of the ways that you are going to change and transform. They start to share all of the ways that you're going to show up differently, how you're going to feel, how you're going to be. And they share what they know with you.
And they give you that confidence that you'll get there. You can ask them anything right now. And just listen to whatever comes up. And just notice how it feels to be in their presence. And then as, as you're listening to them, you ask for what, what wisdom they have for you about how you can get from where you are now to where they are. And just receive whatever wisdom is there. And as you get ready to leave and you offer your gratitude and you head out knowing that you can call on this version of you, this next best version of you whenever you need it. And in fact, they are there ready to help you on this journey to cross this bridge, to close that gap. And just take a breath into that feeling. And when you're ready, you can come on back. And I'll invite you to go to the pages where you've been writing everything down and just add any insights or wisdom that came up as you met that next best version of you. Just take a moment to make sure you've recorded those and got them somewhere where you can come back to them. Now, once you've done that, I hope that's given you some more clarity on what the three actions are that you can take. And what I want to do now is really invite you to take that to the next level. And so this comes from an exercise that James Clear developed. He's the author of something called Atomic Habits. And one of the things I want to offer, and I talked about these small choices that we can make. And one of the things I want to offer is that every action is a vote for the type of person we want to be. And the most important votes that we make are the ones that are part of our daily routine that we make all the time, every day, without even thinking again and again and again. This is like, what's the first thing you do when you get up? What is that whole stream of things that you do as you go through your day? and how many of those things we're doing without intention. We're just moving through. How many of us get up and look at our phone? And then what do we do next? And you know, what do we do before we start our day, before we greet somebody, before we show up in a class? Just all of those things that we often do without intention. And so one of the things that James Clear recommends, and it's a really fascinating book if you wanna step into the science and the practice of changing your habits, these votes that we cast every day again and again and again. But one of the simple exercises that I wanna to offer to you is what he calls is the habit scorecard. So what you're gonna do is on a new sheet of paper, I want you to write down all of the things that you do as part of your habitual morning. So when you wake up, what's the first thing that you do? And break this down into the nitty gritty. So when I wake up, I've got water next to my bed. So I drink some water and then I go to the bathroom and then I come back and I sit meditation 
and then I brush my teeth. And then you just keep going through each one of those actions, write them all down, don't miss anything. And think about what are all the habitual parts of your day. And if you've done that, think about any other habitual part of your day. Maybe it's the a time, you know, before lunch, when you come home, before you go to bed, just choose any other habitual time of your day and see if you can break down all of those actions. Now, once you've got a bunch of those actions down, the next thing I want you to do is to go through each one. And if an action is a vote for this next best version of you, then I want you to put a check mark next to it. If this action is a vote for the things that you're trying to shed, it's actually actually detracting, it's a negative from that version of you. It's making it harder for you to become that person. I want you to put a minus next to it. And if it's neutral, brushing your teeth might be a good example, depending on, you know, maybe the next best version of you is someone who has excellent dental hygiene. But if it's just a neutral thing, you can just leave it and don't put anything there. And just go through and put your check marks in the ones that are votes casting for that next first version of you. And a minus next to the ones that are taking away from that. More debits than credits over here. Yes, thank you, Erin. And, and that definitely part of this process is just that awareness of noticing. And one of the things that that James Clear talks about, it's actually a practice they use that surgeons use, that people who are uh, like train operators will use, where they're calling it. So what that means is they are taking a practice that is habitual and they're calling it out, even though they feel like they could do it in their sleep. It's like, I'm going to do this next. And they say it out loud because by saying and noticing each one of those steps, we are calling our attention to it and we're moving it from the habitual mind into something that we can see. And this whole exercise that we've been doing of really looking at what is that next best version of ourselves it's getting intentional. And then this habit scorecard is bringing it into what, what are the votes that we're casting. And that so much of who we are and who we become is made up in these small choices and in these micro moments of when we choose this path over this one, whether we're stepping into that next best version of ourselves. So what my invitation to you is to imagine what would the day look like for, you know, my case, Jess 4.0. And think of that, that next best version of you and write down any of the actions that would really be a vote cast for that part of that new identity. And you can look at those actions you put in the growing edge and those that middle column. And in doing this exercise, you might have other ones that you wanna to add to that.
So as you're thinking about that, I want to just come back through the work that we've done together today. So we've really started from this place of possibility and opening that up. I encourage you to bring yourself into that place whenever and wherever you can, because there's magic there. And this listening to what are our deep yearnings outside of the shoulds is a really powerful act. And then we moved into getting really intentional of taking that honest inventory of how we show up today. And in my own view of what it would take to rewire the systems of disconnection, of oppression, of injustice that exists in our world, so much of that is building this muscle of self-witnessing, self-reflection, of really being able to see ourselves and how, where we are and how we show up. And so that honest inventory, that check-in of like, how am I actually feeling? How am I feeling in my body? This movement from head to heart. And then this, who is it that I wanna step into? I'm really bringing intention to that. How can I more actively choose love over fear? in all the different ways in my life and then making it very tangible by closing that gap by choosing what are the actions that are going to help me put on that cloak of that next best version of me naming that version and then welcoming them in to help you make choices that are in alignment with who you want to become and the vision you want to create and as change makers this power of intention, this power of knowing self, this power of really stretching into that best version of ourselves, that is what the world needs so much more of. And so as you take these different exercises, as we got into that habit scorecard and looked at those daily votes that we're making all of the time, each of these is a practice of that pause and that intention that I encourage you to continue doing. And I will just show you what I've got for you here. I put together a sheet. Um, Nicole will share the, the link with you. And this just, if you wanna go deeper into any of the things that we did today, we've got this, the lightning round slide deck that we did in case you wanna go back through and just do some visioning sometime or you wanna do it with somebody else. As I mentioned, this work in community is really powerful. Uh, that growing edge image, if you wanna come back to that, to do that more deeply. Uh, the music that I play is In a Dream by Omar Rafat. He's a Canadian pianist. And you can always find that. And then these additional resources. So if you loved that meditation where, we, where you got to meet your future self, there's one here that I've linked from Tara Brock, who does a lot of meditations. So you can come back and listen to that. And then also you can read a bit more about the habit scorecard that James Clear talks about in the Atomic Habits. And if you really want to learn more about this connection between inner work and change making, the Wellbeing Project is where I would invite you to check out. They have the many, many great conversations and talks with people who are looking at that that interconnection and then last but not least um, I hope that you'll stay connected and that if you have questions or reflections or feedback on this session I'd love to hear it um, you can check out my um, my my offering to the world the ember circle and find me on LinkedIn or on Instagram my email address is there too and as you head out today, what I wanted to offer as we, as we close this out is to invite you to take an action as that next best version of you and put into the chat one word or one sentence that for you embodies who it is that you're stepping into. And I know for me, enlightened, beautiful, and mine is delight. Oh.
confident. Oh, beautiful. Choose happiness, love. And Kaylin, I'm so glad that this was informative. Yeah, beautiful, calming, flow. Yeah, awesome. And if there are any questions that you have about this work or about any of the tools that we've looked at, uh, you can drop those. Be inspirational. Thank you, Natalie. Yeah, you can drop those in the chat and or unmute yourself. I think we're probably in a small enough group that you could do that and really happy to, to share my thoughts. I just wanted to thank you, Jess. You've really um, inspired me and brought me to a place of calm today that I didn't know how much I needed. So thank you. Oh, that's great. I'm so glad to hear that. Thank you very much for sharing that. And yeah, I'm so grateful to have a chance to be here at Georgian. I've been following Nicole's work for so long, so it's really nice to actually get a chance, although I'd love to be in person. Um, I'm glad that it still helped create that calming and reconnection and realignment. Any other questions from folks or feedback about what this process has been like for you? Uh, you're so welcome, Erin. We, um, we say in change making, when you're talking about innovation and change making, we always have to live in something called the gray. And I'm sure, Jess, you can align to this. Uh, many times the day that we walk into work, <laughs> that was the morning. Uh, and today's the afternoon and things change rapidly. And so one of the things we do with our team and, and different things like that is the ability to show up how you are with no filters. Because in order to do the work that you need to do to make the change that you want to see happen, everybody has to show up how they are so that the team can support. And, you know, I think you're right, Jess, when you talk about doing this work, it's tough and it's hard and it pushes you on the growth edge. But at the end of the day, if we don't start to look inward and understand what we've learned and recognize that's not always necessarily who we are, we can't really move forward as a community. And so I encourage you today in this session, I was, I'm so thankful that Jess, you came and I knew that your goodness would just emanate out to our amazing students, community and staff. Um, and I would just love to have more of you and love to have more of this messaging available to our students. Because I, I believe as you move out into the world and you see all the pathways that are available to you, don't lose yourself in it. Remember you have gifts to bring to the world and it's those gifts we need not somebody else's, we need yours. So stay healthy and recognize you are enough and you have something to give to us and we need it. The world needs it. So share it when you feel like it. <laughs> oh, so beautiful. Thank you, Nicole. Yeah, and thank all of you for really just showing up for those of you who went through these exercises. It's giving a gift to yourself as well as those you love and serve. Um, so thank you for, for doing that and look forward to hopefully crossing paths with some of you again in the future. That's great. Um, thanks for all the, oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Thank you, Jess and Nicole as well. Um, I, I think I will have to dwell, delve into meditation and relaxation techniques a bit more as I feel like they're, they're really useful, especially at this time in this, you know, in the actual circumstances. And um, the idea of connection with nature and connection with our own selves are stronger than, than before. Yeah, oh, thank you so much for that, Natalie. I love that reflection. I was just gonna add a plug to that. Uh, I think it's, is it Nadi, Nadia or Natalie? I saw it in it's, actually, it's actually Nadia, because okay. that's my daughter's name. I don't know why you showed up. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I saw your name in the chat. So I was just going to say I Nadia. Did. Yeah, thank uh, you for remembering. <laughs> so for everybody who's on the chat, I just want to give you a plug for something called GC at three. 
So GC at three is uh, a mindfulness moment that you can plug into. You can catch it. Uh, you can find it on the student portal or the staff portal. It's something where anybody's available. And if you're interested in it, you can reach out to us at ccsi at georgiancollege.ca. So that information. Um, and so we do have its staff, faculty, community partners, students, and we just meet every day to have a mindfulness moment. It's run by the incredible Tracy Mitchell Ashley and supported by Sarah Hunter. Uh, so if you are looking to get and understand that in a deeper capacity, we do have a community here at Georgian. It's small, but it's growing. And so we would love to have more people join in that. I'll see if I can put info in the chat. <laughs> Um, and on that note, I'm going to leave it open for some questions here. Just as here, we're here till about 11:30, um, and then I know everybody's off. So if you have any questions whatsoever, please just jump on, ask or put in the chat. Or off to your next sessions, mindfully. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Um, Nicole, did you drop in the link to the document with all the other resources? Yeah, I did. I'm going to drop it in again because it's way up the chat now. <laughs> so just give me a second here and I'll drop it in again. And uh, please check out Jess's uh, Ember Circle if you're interested as well, too. Um, I've had an opportunity to work with Jess and it's great. So it's a real nice community. My mother, amazing women, and I believe men, but it was mainly men and women when I was doing it. So uh, uh, really great to um, so check it out. Uh, now I can't spell, there we go. All right, so there's the resources. And then I'm gonna put uh, Jess's website here again in the chat, um, the Ember Circle. So please, uh, that's great. So any parting wisdom, Jess? Mm. Oh, I just, I hope that each of you has an opportunity to really step into that next best version of you as you head out into your day and, and really see each, each time there's something uncomfortable. I like to think of it as like, oh, this is like my assignment. I know we get a lot of assignments in class and then, you know, in our typical learning environment, but also seeing when I'm in something uncomfortable. This is my assignment to practice showing up as the next best version of me. And that it's it's an opportunity for me to build that in, to weave that into this day, into this conversation, into this relationship, and to see my relationships as, as my assignments and my teachers. And so as you go through today, just trying to rewire on what, what are the assignments that you have right now that you can bring this next best version of you into. You can practice showing up as that version of you. And I know that for me, Jess 4.0, I wrote about her so much that she eventually became who I was. Now I write about Jess 5.0. <laughs> so I uh, was really, you know, I looked back on everything I'd written about Jess 4.0 and I was like, oh, I am doing work that makes me feel alive. I am feeling nourished and I do get to share my gifts and I am on fire with a sense of purpose and meaning like, this is incredible. I can't believe I got to this point. It, it took a long time, but I did become just 4.0 in so many ways. And so just offering that is how powerful this work can be to guide you to be this lighthouse and to really bring you to, cresting that and that it's a it's a continual evolution and then you'll get to see where is the next best version of you that you're stepping into um, so i hope that you all get a chance to to practice that and find ways to to bring it into into your journey and into your life fantastic thank you so on that note, we're going to let everybody go. So if you have to pop off to your next session or wherever, you're, wherever your day will lead you to the new next best version of yourself, please go. Um, go forth with love and know that you are supported by your Georgian College community in many ways. So chi miigwech to all of you. And if there's any questions, I'll be online for two minutes. And thank you, Jess, for joining us today. We are honored and grateful. Thank you, everybody. Fantastic.
Go forth and change the world. Hey, Jess, uh, can I talk to you for a second? <laughs> uh, so I resonated with a lot of what you do, the kind of work that you do. And I do it in my own way, uh, maybe like a self plug, <laughs> but I've been on uh, YouTube for a year now trying to follow tarot readings. Uh, and I've been doing the light worker work, shadow work, dark night of the soul, whatever those labels you call. I'm not sure if you're familiar with those, but I have been in this journey for almost two years now. And right now, recently just experienced Kundalini awakening. And that has been an enlightening thing to do. So the entire session that you just organized was like a recap of what my life has been in the past two years of the kind of work that I've been trying to achieve and more so. So thank you for reminding me everything that I needed to remember that I've achieved so far. Oh, amazing, yeah. Oh, that sounds really incredible. Thank you for sharing that and for sharing the like all these different parts of the journey that you're exploring. Um, yeah, well, I hope that you'll get to do one of these workshops. Sounds like you've got a lot of beautiful knowledge to share. Um, and yeah, there's, there's so much in like really being able to share it with others and pay that forward. Uh, that's really what's motivated me in my own work too. So yeah, thank you for being here and for sharing that. Thank you, take care. Thank you. All right, everyone, that was beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you, Nicole, thank you. Anytime, we're in the Center for Change Making. Happy to have these conversations with you anytime. All right, everybody. On that beautiful note, Jess, thank you again. I'm gonna close this off in case the Zoom channel is required by somebody else. And uh, I'll, I'll connect with you on email and thank you so much for being mm -hmm. here. Thank you, Nicole, this was a lot of fun. Take care, everybody. Take care, bye.